h of x equals negative x cubed plus 2x squared minus 16x plus 32. And they say a 0 equals negative 4i. So just like last problem, we know that x equals negative 4i is our 0. So if negative 4i equals 0, then we know that x has to be equal to positive 4i, right? Now, if those are our zeros, just like the problems up there, we know we can write the factors, correct? So I can set these equal to zero and write the factors. Or I can just say that my factors are x minus 4i times x plus 4i, right? Those are the two factors I know right now. But this polynomial is to the third degree, so I know those are not the only two factors. There's one more zero that I'm missing, or one more factor that I'm missing, right? Okay, so these are my two factors though. I can multiply my factors, right? Factors, these are all my linear factors. I can multiply this to produce another factor, but just as a quadratic. Um, and I notice that these are conjugates of each other, so therefore conjugates are going to be the difference of two squares. Just multiply the first two terms. x squared, multiply the last two terms. Negative 16i squared, x squared plus 16. Or if you wanted to use that other method, Ms. Colwell, you know, you guys did, you know, oh, here's my zero, what's the factor form of it? X squared plus 16, right? Now, unfortunately, you can't use synthetic division with this, though, right? Because that X is squared, correct? So you can't use synthetic division. However, ladies and gentlemen, we can apply long division. Okay, so I'm just going to work through the problem on long division. And if you guys just want to follow along, it's going to be helpful for you for the rest of the year. And I think for these problems, it's helpful because I don't like dealing with so many I's. I think it's easy, too easy to make mistakes. So in doing long division, we always divide using our first term, make sure it's in descending order. And then we always multiply times both terms. Okay? So x squared divides into negative x cubed, negative x times. Right? That's, all, that's pretty much what I'm asking. Negative x cubed divided by x squared oh. equals negative x. Then you take that quotient and you multiply it by both terms. So therefore, x, negative x times x squared is x cubed. Negative x times 16 is a negative 16x. Right? I didn't, I'm just going to put it under that one because I don't want to put it under the x squared. Then what you do is you group the whole term and you subtract. So now you say it out loud because if you don't say it out loud, you'll probably make mistakes. Well, yes? Oh. Um, no, that is supposed to be a negative. That's negative times that. That's a negative. Thank you. Because negative x cubed minus a negative x cubed becomes a? Zero x cubed, right? <laughs> negative 16x minus 16x is zero x. So therefore, those just don't count, all right? They just eliminate. Now, we break down the next term. So now I have two x squared, and you do the whole process again. x squared divides into two x squared. Two x squared divided by x squared equals two positive 2. Then you multiply the 2 times both terms. So therefore you get now 2x squared and then 2. Now you multiply the 2 times 16 and you get a positive 32. And remember I brought down this 32. So now you group them and you subtract. And ladies and gentlemen, when I subtract these, I get 0x squared, and I get 0. So therefore, no remainder, that's my quotient. Was that my other factor? Yes, so therefore, that's my factor. I set it equal to 0 to find the 0, and I can say that x equals negative 2. Okay? So it's up to you guys. If you want to do synthetic division twice with i's, that's cool. If you guys rather do long.